Hey guys, so we've been in business for quite a while right now and we're really excited about the adventure and thanks for being along for the ride. New folks, old folks, all y'all. Now is a good time because we're getting ready to start Icon Bronco number 100. Man, how time flies. So we did this little video series to show you what we've done. We're going from the very first prototype Bronco that was featured on the Ford booth at the SEMA show through to our most recent build. You'll see derelicts, you'll see U14s, U15s, a roadster, new school, old school, all of it. But it's kind of fun and if you watch closely, you'll notice all the things that we've constantly tweaked and geeked and evolved in the details. Some of them really big, some of them super small. So thanks for watching, enjoy the ride. always into classic cars. So was my dad growing up and I used to see back east these long lines of hot rods and what are those cars, the shapes and the colors. It just had so much story and so much more heart than even the contemporary vehicles I was seeing then in the 70s. All my artistic focus sort of converged in automotive because all the aspects of everything else that I've always enjoyed artistically, they all come together in chorus in transportation. So when Ford reached out to us and asked if we'd be interested in building a singular icon Bronco, uh, we, we jumped at the opportunity and actually decided to do all the engineering to make it our next new model. I just wanted to do a real simple walk around tour of the new icon Bronco. This truck's uh, all pretty and ready to go. We're going to deliver it tomorrow morning to its client. This particular truck is built uh, Kind of the way I'd build my own, really. So it's got the uh, volcanic block powder-coated trim with a Ranger package. Hutchinson run-flat bead lock rims. Icon Sport brakes, which denotes six-piston front calipers, four-piston rear, and then oversized rotors that you can just isolated mats. There you see the controls for the locking differentials and air compressor as well as the twin sticks for the Atlas II, the Garmin navigation, the drilled CNC lightweight pedals, and I'm not trying to make a race car. This truck's heavy. They're about 4,000 pounds. Front uh, wench with the uh, Viking hardware. It has the reverse light. It has the sport brakes. It has locking differentials. Uh, we're still monkeying with the engine bay and moving things around. This one's pretty close to my final spec, although there's too many wires there on the passenger side, so we came up with a smarter way of routing those. Each of the trucks comes with these data plates, which are CNC'd, acid etched, and enameled and stainless. With all of the Icon Broncos, you know, we start with a complete original vintage Bronco. We then uh, maintain the original body structure and restore it and modify it to comply with our fit dynamics, which is mostly related to interior configurations, speaker box panels, seat mounts, brackets, audio, interior cabinet panels, uh, Ranger trim, the amp research power steps, the full Focal audio with amp and bass and navigation, heated seats, winch, auxiliary lighting, front and rear, etc. Well, pretty much all the good stuff. It's also running the architectural glass. So this truck uh, is built with the Ranger trim package, with the sport brakes option, as well as the sport suspension. You can see it has the what we call the architectural glass option. This video is going to show you around a 66 Ford Bronco that we've just restored and modified into the Icon Bronco program. There you see the body after several months of love, and here is the truck done. This is Icon Bronco number eight, and the point of this video is to try and communicate at least some of the details that go into our work. Icon Bronco restoration number nine, starting with that nice original paint 74 brown truck. Here it is with the top off. Really like this truck, great color. Um, it's uh, kind of a matte silver. Number 10 in 1969, we started with a nice Rust-free original paint six-banger truck and gutted it. Process took about eight months. 
Here's some brief snapshots showing it coming back together. Running a triangulated four link rear with Fox Racing and Eibach shocks with remote cans. Bodies painted on a rotisserie 360 and then polyurea coated on the inside. And then there you see the stainless laser cut inlay for the tailgate. And here she is done. Pleased to find the body was actually nicer than we thought for a change. So then starting to go back together. Uh, paint done, polyurea, dynamat, sound blanket interlaid, axle specced out, brakes attached, build out the chassis, start working on final assembly on the body. Start roughing out the interior, HVAC, more dynamat, more insulation. Get that front clip on, body on the frame, start plumbing the motor. Getting closer and closer and wow, that looked easy. It was done. Here's a new angle I found for the front end, super cool. Trust me, those arms aren't bent. That's the GoPro lens. I was kind of cheating there and left it in low gear. It's really not that loud, but it sounded pretty sexy, so I was having a little bit of fun. Now everyone seems to like it very much so far. They've already been uh, logging some miles up in the Bay Area. There you can see the reconfigured dash for the iPad integration. There's the 5.0, and here's the sequence tag in the engine bay, CNC. So we tooled up and pextoed these and made them out of aluminum and made them removable with all blind attachment points. It worked out nice. Here's the truck back from paint, approaching final assembly. Really cool color. We displayed this truck on the Fox Racing booth at the SEMA trade show this year in November 2014. The truck was a big hit, and we were proud to be there with our partner. It looks similar to prior charcoal gray matte broncos but each one is different believe it or not this one has the ranger trim option the black rock rims bf goodrich all terrains but of course ran a smaller tire size than normal due to garage clearance concerns for the client those icon letters are cnc and stainless and then enameled by ford's oem partner for us tuffy center console which hides the audio head unit as well as the seat heaters for the front seats the rear seats on the Icon BR do not have heat. Upstairs here, the headliner, the stock cardboard headliner is replaced with an Alcantara system. The windshield wiper system is updated to a three speed with delay single motor modern unit. Here's the Learjet visors. We're running the Coyote 5.0 fuel injected V8 from our friends at Ford. This is the motor you would find in a current production Mustang GT. Features variable valve timing and cam control. And it's a really nice motor with tons of performance. And now that we've managed to unlock the variable valve timing and cam control with our friends at AEM, now we can really fine tune and bring on the torque and the horse exactly where it benefits a truck platform the best, which is really a welcome addition. I was building this truck on spec because I love this color and I kept pitching it to clients and nobody wanted to do it. So it's called Frozen Bronze and it's a color used by BMW um, with a satin finish on the new M6 sedans. And ever since I saw them debut that at the LA Auto Show, I took note of the color code and knew I had to do it. this one uh, we built this client this truck for a repeat client and friend thank you for your continued support mr. Rick and he liked the American bison hide that we've used on several projects so the interior configuration and layout is the standard fare but we upholstered the seats console lid and hand wrapped the steering wheel in the bison hide Also CNC, aluminum, uh, hand filled with enamel. This truck's also running the sport pedals, full audio suite with Focal speakers, JL Audio Basin amp. My favorite white 
So it's a gloss white, and it was originally used on uh, Maseratis back in the 1960s. And there's something about it. It's like a clean, pure white, but it's not <clears throat> like super bright or obnoxious. Really cool color. Cool thing is too, we achieved this color with a two-stage paint. Usually to get this sort of candy apple effect, it's a three-stage or a four-stage, which is a pain in the butt when it comes time for repairs. But this is a modern OEM two-stage, so super easy. Hey guys, how's it going today? Thanks for joining me yet again for another test drive. Just getting ready to ship this bugger off. This is a 1976 Ford Bronco. Really nice color. Yet another in a dark charcoal gray. I know we seem to do a lot, but people seem to like that color tone a lot. Each one's been subtly different, so this one's no exception. And we have another one, in fact, coming up that's actually this same color, but with a conventional gloss finish. Well, good morning. Today we are on a final test drive in an Icon BR specifically. This is number 27 we have going on here. We have the Chilowich upholstery option with the removable Chilowich rubber backed Dynamat lined floor mats. We have the seat heaters in the front seats, which flanks the audio head unit in the new Icon stainless steel center console. On the outer ends of those axles, you will find the Icon sport brakes designed and built by our buddies at Brembo. That is controlled by a Hydro Boost Master. Works very, very well. I'm uh, really pleased with Hydro Boost. I've switched pretty much all production now. Architecture is triangulated four link with Johnny joints in the rear and radius arm with Johnny's in the front and then you have front and rear tunable sway bars as well. Well hello my friends today we are in a 1972 Ford Bronco restored icon style so let's take it for a little spin and I will tell you more details. Bison armrests, we did the bison inserts on cargo and door panels, and therefore we did a different carpet. So I used the Hard Garden Square Weave out of Germany. That's one of my favorites, and you'll most commonly, commonly, whatever, often see it at Icon on my one-off builds. So, there's that. But I guess at least this way you can see the Linex Poly... Wasn't looking for it, we got plenty of power, but made a nice difference. We started off with an Epic Original Paint 68 Bronco no alterations to it thing was dead stock it had thrown a rod so it had been parked way back when because of the engine failure and no one had dealt with it example and um white obviously doing a run of white lately you seen how many each one's actually been different and different whites different matte or high gloss different trim coloration so they're each unique, but it's interesting. We just did uh, a run of whites all at once. I don't know. Comes in waves. My team's already put the 500 test miles on it. So it's pretty much ready to be delivered. But I, of course, had to sneak it away to share it with you guys. So it's 75. It is finished in a lovely frozen or satin charcoal paint. It has uh, no Ranger trim. It has the usual Icon design front and rear bumpers, the rear with the swing out tire carrier integrated reverse camera integrated reverse light. We're 
running the automatic computer controlled tranny with overdrive and that sends power through to the Atlas II twin stick shift on the fly part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. In an Icon BR, specifically this is a 1968 model and it's super cool. This color is just perfect. We've done several silvers but I gotta say this is the ultimate silver to me. It almost looks like like machined billet aluminum fresh out of a CNC. Hello again my friends. I have been dying to finish this one so I could share it with you. This is something new for us. So obviously it's an Icon BR, but it is the first of a new model that we're gonna offer here forward. It is called the Old School. So why the old school, you might ask? Well, pretty straightforward. I'm not saying you're asking a dumb question or anything, but it's pretty obvious. The idea was to create a far more retro and old school aesthetic. When we were developing this, what was really crucial is we had to make sure we had synergy in sort of the nose read or personality of all the vehicles in the Icon line of blue in it which I'm hoping will read on a film today it's just starting to rain so the light should be just right so let's talk about specs starting on the outside no Ranger trim haven't done any with Ranger trim for quite a while now instrument panel housing and that is housing the Dakota digital system, which I uh, redesigned with Camilla Pardo and we monkeyed with uh, font and coloration and all that. Um, it is a 1966, and uh, you Bronco geeks already knew that, but for those that don't, the earliest versions have unique door handles and door panel designs, as well as the rear hatch lift handle stock. You know, there's other things like the, the really cool sombrero hubcaps, and then there's no outside side marker reflectors or lights because actually the vehicle design predated the Department of Transportation. 1968 Ford Bronco started with a lovely truck. We got lucky there. It is Icon BR number 49. So, silver. You know what's fun with silver when you're painting silver? Silver is like a whole spectrum on its own. You can do so many different tweaks and tones with it. Mini Tex Black, which is a coating that we use on, on many of the trim details on these trucks anyway. It is a 1966. This truck has a lot of unique details that I think you guys are going to appreciate, and I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain. So the client knew about a project that we had been working on, and he liked a lot of the elements in that project. By the way, you guys will see what's up with that project here in probably another month or so. So his mandate was retro. Truck to be finished in 2018. Figured I'd take it out for a little test drive as usual and share it with you. It is a 1973 Ford Bronco, restored and modified to become an Icon BR. It's Icon BR number 52. We are back again today in an Icon BR, specifically this is number 54. This truck is built to a very nice standard, tons of good options, great color, gloss, super deep blue with silver metallic. You find in and under our standard Bronco New School, but I made about 40 changes to the design all cosmetic, right? So like it's the same wiring harness, it's the same suspension, it's the same powertrain, but the actual tactile visual interface is quite different. What's cool about it is it brings like a different demographic into the brand. 
aftermarket stainless steel hinges, wherein you can lift and release on the hinge pin. And then also, since we have power windows and power door locks, we had to come up with a clever way of making that disconnectable and convenient. Client request also that the power windows not be the analog crank style. He wanted a more modern lit switch, so that's what he got. Friends, how's it going? Today, we are in a old school Icon Bronco, one of the first. It is number 59. It's built from a really nice original 1970 model year. It's a beautiful gloss, kind of smoky blue gray, and it just works really well on the year when the vehicle was completed and shipped. So the ever talented young Mason went and shot this, and you're going to have to deal with my narration. What you see is a 1971 Icon BR. We started with a 1971 Bronco, and here you see it finished in the BMW Ionic Silver. There you see the CNC typical front stainless grille letters and aluminum anodized CNC side badge. Wheels and with the blacked out Ranger trim. You'll notice we also went ahead and volcanic black powder coated the front grill assembly, as well as the laser cut two layer stainless tailgate insert. Those are the latest version of the forged Icon New School wheels where they have the floating lizard center caps and we're in yet another Icon BR restored in a highly modified 1970 Ford Bronco. Specifically, this is number 62 in our series. This one is done in the new school design package. This one's finished in a gloss finish, two stage charcoal gray metallic. It has the BF Goodrich KO all terrain tires. And we're running the Icon New School forged aluminum 18 inch wheels made right here in Southern California. Icon Bronco number 63, and it is a 1969. We chose a super white, literally that's what it's called, from Toyota. That's just a really clean, pure, bright white. And then of course in the Storm Trooper theme, that means that a lot of the trim that is normally anodized or various textures is all blacked out. So this truck is built in the new school style. It is running a blacked out front machined grill as well as the two part laser as well as the original 302 front badges. Those badges are optional. It's up to the client whether they want them or not, as is the Ranger trim, which I left in the original factory style finish, factory rear view mirrors and exterior door handles as well. We're running, of course, the only option for the old school Icon Bronco, the old school wheel. This is Icon BR number 65. It is a 1969 Ford Bronco. This one is finished in the old school style, which is becoming quite popular. Have you guys seen the configurator that we designed and put up on the website? It's pretty cool, you should check it out. We did the Ranger trim, which is the bright exterior trim down the belt line. Same idea, picked and chose different parts and pieces that we liked. The seats that we used in the new school, I'm perfectly pleased with. So I used those, I used the CNC trim pieces for that, for the recline handle and spool cover. But then I finished those in a unique powder coat color that we're using on all of the old school Broncos and FJs. And you'll see that finish yet again on the stainless steel center console. The console has a gas shock for the lid. It has USB ports on the inside. It's the more sort of technical industrial vibe with the bull bar in front integrating the worn winch and Viking recovery gear, pulse fair lead, ARP recovery gear bag, and synthetic rope and the integrated uh, Icon branded fog lights. In the rear, you have the tire carrier integrated class two receiver. Specifically, it is a 1971. 
It is Icon BR number 68, and it is built in the old school design package. So mechanically, we are running the Coyote 5 liter aluminum fuel injected V8. Instead, we did this beautiful kind of milled sort of new buck suede super thick and durable leather interior from our friends at Moore and Giles. And to complement that design, we carried that leather over to the insert on the new school ribbed stainless laser cut door panels and cargo panels. And we also got rid of the Chilowich carpet and decided to go ahead and fit, hey, there's an icon on a test drive. An icon Bronco, but not the usual icon Bronco. Today we are driving an Icon Bronco derelict style, which is the second one that we've ever created. Specifically, this is Icon number 71, and it is a 1970 year model. Occasionally we will come across Broncos when our hunters buy them for us, we bring them to the shop. Hello my friends, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a little test drive and tour of the latest Icon Bronco. This is Icon BR number 72. It is a 1973 year model though. Let my baby go and deliver the vehicle to the client. Today, we are in a Icon BR. So that is a lovingly restored and highly modified 1972 Ford Bronco stretch that uh, really touch and feel is very comparable to a leather. We did perforated inserts on the seats because it just breaks it up a little bit. And then we carried that contrast to the door panels by doing solid white on the top and then the perforated below the LED underlit door spear that's characteristic of the old school edition interior. My good friends, I hope everyone is well. So, beautiful day today, a little hazy, but not cold like most of the rest of the country. So I'll take it. Today I'm gonna to take you on a final test drive in another Icon Bronco. Today we are out in Icon Bronco number 76 it is a 1969 year model and this one is finished in the more newly ish released icon old school edition design package so and it is icon br number 77 so there you go that's the down and dirty now let's get into the fun stuff um really nice and lively retro color combo on this pedals, the aluminum pedals. We had the Icon Fire Extinguisher, and we did a black Alcantara headliner on this one, which is pretty common for us, but really good material and just kind of disappears, but it's super durable and easy to maintain. We've got our Icon gauges designed by my team and then executed by our friends at Dakota Digital. It is a 1968 Ford Bronco, obviously and it is Icon Bronco number 80. So it is done in the superlative old school style. The color palette and textiles and trim and everything on this truck are just so like 60s groovy retro. It's the Dakota Digital Manufacturer gauge of my design. It's very retro and uh, old school dash layout, which is unique to old school. So the wiring harness and everything is the same in my new school and old school as I and he sold me the truck. Immediately it went into the Ford derelict only personal board because not only was the patina and all the conditions and everything just right, but the story was just so cool. So the truck originally, I believe it's maybe 80, 90% of its use was just for this older gentleman's hobby. I guess he wasn't old in the beginning. So the truck is in 1967 and grandpa's hobby was going out and playing in the desert and mostly prospecting. Super funky Icon Ford Bronco. 
this truck is the first Icon U14, meaning half cab removable hardtop, versus the more common quotes U15 and the other variants. So, really digging this truck. It is a 1974, and it has some pretty out there choices when it comes to color palette and textile. At sunrise, gotta get this shoot done. Got a busy week. Today we are in yet another. Icon Bronco. This truck is a 1968. It is built in the old school style, which has been so popular. I'm really excited about that. It also is done in a really neat stock color you don't see too often, referred to as boxwood green. We did the Wimbledon white inset in the grill and the Wimbledon white dash and roof. This truck was also built with the Icon Bikini Top, which features a tubular steel brace to keep that... Well, hello again, my friends. Glad you came along for another test drive. Today we're in a neat one, and this is a 1968 Ford Bronco U14, which denotes the bulkhead and the half cab, and it... Uh, it's number 84 in the Icon series of builds, and it's done in the derelict style. Really cool truck, repeat client. School just kind of helps that continuity and the design vibe of the sort of retro situation. In the rear, we're running the tuck and tumble removable two passenger bench seat, and we are running the seat heaters in the front seats as well. For audio, we have the Pioneer NEX latest and greatest, so HD, FM. So this vibrant blue, and basically it was kind of a Le Mans inspired motif. So we got this super cool Le Mans textile pattern and this cool blue leather that was designed to match it. Quintessential new school in that it is built in this lovely Argent silver, which is actually a Fiat Ferrari uh, group color beautiful finish lovely paint job on this one super deep and straight we spend a lot of time on the bodies on these to get them right you know one thing we do is we something I pioneered about 20 years ago and stopped doing for a little while and then picked it back up again after we do all the metal related body work we powder coat the entire body assembly when it's completely disassembled it has such a great patina Cool history. It must have been owned by quite the outdoorsman, and he was apparently a firefighter. And the gentleman who purchased the truck is also a firefighter, so he felt an affinity with the truck. And we left all the cool vintage firemen and NRA stickers and doodads on the back. We haven't left, I guess he probably did volunteer work out of this truck, and he had installed some supplementary rear red lights for like emergency flashers. We tied them to the uh, emergency. Also subtly features the Icon power windows. So those are controlled by what appear to be the stock analog window cranks. And you simply tap down for down, you tap up for up. But if you double tap up or you double tap down, you get all windows up or all windows down. We're also doing the power door locks, so you can still control the door locks from the original door interior analog pins. So let's start with the paint. They're both custom colors. One's actually Wimbledon white, the other one's custom. So it's kind of sort of like a bone and a Wimbledon white on whitish, but with enough uniqueness in the two tones that it does on its waxy, it's got a fair amount of sheen that's going to calm down very quickly and it will age, crackle, and patina and get some funk as time goes by, which will be lovely. We use that on the door, cargo, seat, center console panels. The seat's 360 degrees in the aforementioned leather. Cargo and door panels, we did a really cool vintage African mud dyed textile insert something kind of nifty certainly i've never seen it done before 
something the client hunted down and it adds a little bit of character and some of her personal story to the truck. This one built obviously in the derelict style. It is number 91. And uh, you know what, for, for again, a little change of pace, let's just go from the front to the back and I'll walk you guys through it. The paint on this truck is original. The bumper on this truck, both of them are original. So they got a little bumpsy bruises and stuff going on, but Again, with a derelict, that's part of the charm. It's funny because it looks like the previous owner tried to give himself an upgrade to a higher trim package with an aerosol can and he silvered out the grill. Not really the best executed craftsmanship, but he gets a, maybe a D for effort. But again, for us, it's cool. It works out just fine. This is, you can tell by the new Battlestar Galactica hideous, uh, in my humble opinion, engine cover. This is the later gen coyote that we've recently transitioned to using. Today we are on a final test drive in the 94th Icon Bronco. This particular truck is built in the old school style and it's uh, quite lovely if I may say so myself. Boxwood green really nice factory color you don't see too often and that is paired with the uh, usual old-school exterior options so we have the Wimbledon white top we have the light green window tint which works really nice with this body you hardly notice but it's kind of adds amplifies that retro styling the interior on this truck I really like this leather is really unique. It's orange. It's got a lot of natural grain and pull up. It's not waxy, but it will burnish and burnish pretty quick. Well, thanks for coming along on that journey with us. It's been uh, so much fun here at Icon. It really beats a real job. I'm honored that we've had the opportunity to build so many Icon Broncos and we got a whole bunch of them in queue that are coming down the pipeline here in the near future. Count on us sharing those with you as well. Is there anything that uh, you think we should do that you haven't seen us do? Let me know. Put it out there in the comments. Uh, we uh, would love to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, thank you as always for your support. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and we'll see you next week.